So here we go, it is time for August pickups and this month I have managed to obtain two games I never thought I would own. I am so happy. It's probably been my most epic pickups I've had since the start of this channel and even the No Tea No Crumbage channel. Guys, stay tuned for some amazing games. Okay, so we'll start the month off with a game I forgot last month. Um, I don't personally own a Switch, but my daughter does, so I got my I put my account on it, and I bought Virtual Racing from the uh, Sega collection, Sega Sega Ages collection. Yeah, it's good. Um, I played it for about a half hour or so, started getting into it. Handling's great. What well, the upgrade to the graphics they've done, everything is phenomenal. An absolute must get and really, really, really seriously um, enjoyed it. I need to get into it a bit more to find out where the new cars and all the new tracks are, but I've not spent enough time with it, but I will soon. Other pickups this month, well, I've got another digital pickup. I picked up Doom 64. Um, I think it was £1.99. It's one of the games I've always wanted to play on the N64. It was well, bought on the Xbox One, of course. But, you know, always heard it's seen it. It's quite pricey when you're out, and um, I always heard about how dark it is, but apparently with the new upgrades it's really good. And for £1.99 and achievements, you can't go wrong. Right, so where do, else do I start? So first of all, yes, Jabba is tactically hiding stuff, because they're awesome and they're really cool stuff. Online on the Facebook uh, marketplace, I managed to pick up these um, five Sega Dreamcast magazines, complete with demo discs. And um, yeah, they're all really, really, really good condition. Um, works out I paid three pounds each for them, and so I can't complain because I am slowly trying to get a complete Dreamcast magazine collection set. And um, yeah, really cool. And on another magazine note, I picked up ten uh, at last ten Sega Saturn magazines. But I've been trying to get hold of the Sega Saturn magazines for the longest time ever now. I managed to pick up these via Mark Jowlett. I mean, he lists them. I think they're four pounds an issue. I paid for these. Um, unfortunately, none of them have a demo disc, and they're all in seven plus condition. I had to get double of number twenty six because my one was pretty much in awful, awful condition. But all these are in really decent condition, and I'm really looking forward to getting down and reading them. I know when they came out back in the day, I absolutely read them from front to back cover, read them to death, and I loved every single moment of it. Um, the story back in the day when um, Richard Ledbetter of um, Digital Foundry fame, I used to phone up Sega Saturn, Saturn Magazine editorial every month um, as soon as a new issue was out because I knew how in it, how below how behind sorry magazines run, which was always like four to six weeks. And I used to phone him every single month, and we used to chat for about two hours or so. He used to tell me all the new news and everything like that. And one of the biggest, longest conversations we had was all day. I just remember him being on the phone and just telling me about um, the Sonic Jam collection. He was so chuffed and we were talking about the future of possibly actually getting a 3D Sonic game on the Sega Saturn. Now you can imagine that never actually happened, but yeah, good memories. We used to love talking to him. Yeah, and the guy in Digital Foundry is so worth watching. Awesome. Alright, so other pickups. Um, I picked up some Xbox One and... PS4 games. The first one I picked up was Forza 7. So if you can imagine with the um, Forza announcement, um, I was kind of excited to get hold of them and play some original Forza Motorsport. And I'm a massive fan of Forza Horizons. I love them. I play them every day. Don't play them as much as Richard. He plays them all the time. I can't believe the amount of hours and achievements he's got in it. I mean, ugh, well done, dude. Um, yeah, that was a local pickup for eight pounds. We wanted to play it, get into it, and. The first thing that blows you away is the graphics, they are absolutely stunning and um, me and, um, and Fred Adrian came around the other night and he, he was even chuffed about how he, he could control it, how the handling he did was so much better, he wasn't flying off the track and yeah, it was great fun. Another game I picked up, oh, it was a uh, eBay buy, one I've been bloody meaning to get for ages because it has my favourite cat fighter in it and that is Nitro, Nitro Plus Blasters. Now. Um, for those of you that are, I think me and Tony played this for the Notino Crumpets channel not too long ago, and um, it has a lady that fights with cats, and it's a 2D beat em up, it's really, really cheap, and I really highly recommend getting it. Plays absolutely fantastic, and a nice big roster of characters. And you can throw cats at people and do special moves with cats. It's awesome! And um, my last pickup on the PS4, now this pickup will probably be my last ever 
current PS4 pickup, and that is Ghost of Satsuma, as I call it, tell it to everyone, and everyone's like, no, it's not that, it is actually Ghost of Tsushima. Now, I put this in my machine and been meaning to play it, and I've not got around to actually having a chance to play it, because uh, busyness of everyday life and so forth and everything get back to normal. But this looks absolutely stunning. I cannot wait to actually spend some extended time. And we all know the winter months are coming, so it means a lot more gaming. Uh, I watched Richard play this for about an hour and a half when I was round, and I was just like, yeah, I need to get me that. I need to get me that. So I did. And if anyone's wondering, yes, I did pick Jabba the Hutt up. I got him on one of the, I think it's called Yub Nub Auctions, or it's one of them sites, Rebels. Uh, basically, they, they, they put an item up, and they say, you know, make an offer on me. They say yes or no, and I made an offer, and I got it. And yeah, I've always wanted just, just the Jabba. I just want the Jabba, and I'll probably get the Princess Leia boss. A nice little display bit of the corner, a little Lando, which shouldn't be too, expired, too expensive to get. But yeah. It's kind of video game related because it's in some um, Star Wars video games. But anyway, um, people that um, watch this channel or even my other channel, the Telegram is quite regularly. No, I'm really good friends with the other YouTuber, Radical Reggie. And we've been friends for about oh, blah, 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 eight or nine years. Um, talk, we Skype pretty much every other week. And we're always in contact with each other and we tend to do game trades. Basically, he picks some games from the UK. I go out and get him, scour the network, and um, pick up the ones he wants and you know he's like me and has to be complete and then what we do is I pick games from over there that I want and we for the same value and then we trade games and so I sent his bundle over and he got his bundle in like three or four days it was really crazy and I got my bundle and this bundle of mine was well the foot just top one I didn't actually ask for he actually just had this he said have you got this and I'm like no but I would like it and that is Metal Slug Double X on the PSP. Now, never played the PSP version because my PSP squeaks when I'm playing it. I even need to WD-40 it or get a new one, but I will. I absolutely love this, and I've actually got it on the Xbox with the expansion. I don't know if this actually has the expansion on it, but pretty stupid, pricey game in the UK. This one now, and the next one was Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Um, yeah, I love this game. It basically brings an end to that storyline where it all reboots it from the that is Mortal Kombat series there. Uh, has a kajillion characters in it, and uh, it's where Blaze was created. It's really cool, like a shiny case. And for some stupid reason, they never released it in the UK. You know, it's kind of like, well, we'll give you everything else, but we won't give you that one. It's like Capcom with the Capcom Arcade Classics Collection. We'll give you Volume 1, but not Volume 2. But I've got it anyway. But yeah, Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Doesn't play too great. It's the old 3D tactic. It's the old 3D style of play, but it's a good fun game. Um, Samurai Showdown 5. Yep. Another game. SNK didn't give us in the UK that I wanted to, that I actually had to get. Um, I love the as you know, I love the Samurai Showdown series. It's quite funny that I've got this they've just released like a massive Samurai Showdown collection on it on all current gen systems. Um, only on only digital for Xbox and I like don't mind digital but I like the physical games and uh, yeah, you got this one, I'm really chuffed with this. I really want to get King of Fighters Near Wave as well, which of course only come out in America on Xbox. Um, and the last one, which is one I've been after for the longest time ever, and we'll never ever see it over here on, in eBay, when we do, it's massively inflated. That is Jurassic Park, the game. Now, while I don't have an import Xbox 360 to play this on, I do actually, it's backwards compatible on the Xbox One. And as we know, um, backwards compatibility removes all region locking. So, yay! You know, really, really chuffed, and I got that, and I will be playing for it. It's by Telltale, it's like a story thing. You know, kind of like the other ones they've done, um, Walking Dead, and it seems to have melted. You know, and you can see that somehow in the post or in its lifetime. But yeah, so those were the results from my trade with Reggie, and I'm super happy. But oh my god, oh my god, wow, 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 wow. Oh my god, people, social situations. Yes, I've been watching IT Grad recently. Um, so this is a story. Um, I basically have always said to myself, why, why, I am an idiot, why did I sell my Saturn Dreamcast that game so many years ago, and then why did I buy them, been buying them back recently? And you know how sometimes you just kind of like, I can't remember why did I do that? But yes, I do remember why I've done it. And recently, I have sold off part of my um, Sega Saturn collection, not a massive part, but I sold off all my Game Gear as well, 
and I'm so happy because what I've got from the funds from that is more than blows it away. But yes, I'm going to say the horrible reason I decided to sell stuff years ago, and everyone hates it and people don't think it exists, and that is disc rot. Yes, it's, uh, disc rot is a complicated thing. It's not little see-through tiny holes in your discs, it's not pinholes, it's nothing like that. That is not disc rot. Those are, pinholes are just people being idiots, but the bits where you see the little tiny see-through bits, that is not disc rot. That is just manufacturing defects. Disc rot is when you have, like, say, a little see-through bit, but then you have, like, a oily cover around that circle which breaks into the disc. So I happened a friend of mine contacted me and said, have you collected, checked your Sega Saturn collection recently? And I was like, no, I don't need to, it's absolutely fine. And so it got me paranoid, because then I, I remembered, oh my god, that's why I sold them, because I was paranoid about losing my best, best stuff. And so I checked them, and I had... 12 games, these are all UK PAL, I've never seen it in, anything, in, in any Japanese games or anything, I lost 12 games, they all had disc rot, and out of the 12 games, 10 of them are ones that I bought recently, um, to re-add to the collection, and I was really, oh my god, this is why I sold them, and I was going crazy, so I <laughs> chucked the discs away, and I've sold the manuals and cases on eBay, uh, and that, that was it, that's me done, I mean, I looked into it deeply how disc rot occurs, what happens, and the two consoles that are susceptible the most are the UK PAL, UK PAL, Sega Saturn, and the American GameCube. Those two consoles are just absolutely really badly plagued by it. And please, please do check your disc. Um, I use Data Checker, which you can put your CD in on your PC. It takes about an hour, but it will read the entire disc and you will get like a hundred, it'll say a hundred percent if all the data is it. Even with the little tiny little see-through bits, you know, the manufacturing details, your hundred percent data is still there. That is not disc rot. You must know disc rot will have like an oily bit coming away. It's basically where your disc is, and then they do the printed bit on top. And over time, in air, it kind of oxidizes, and and the glue between the top part and the disc comes away, which causes the little hole, which causes the milkiness, which causes all the data to get deaded and we don't want that. So yeah, so I ended up selling off um, about 35 satin. I'm not going to sell them all. Ones that I play, some I've kept, they've got the see-through part and they, they absolutely work flawless. I want to keep, I'm not bothered about playing, I want to keep games I want to play, especially for the Sega Saturn. I mean, if I'm not fussed about them, then I don't want to have something sat there that could just be, frankly, just degrading all the time. So I just moved them on to new homes for people to play and enjoy. Um, but I kept all my mainstay titles and the ones I, I really want to play and the ones I do play regularly. And after doing that, I kind of like looked around, looked at my Game Gear, Game Gear collection. I thought I'd play some Game Gear games. You know what? I'm really, I don't like the Game Gear. I, I love Satan. And yeah, I just thought, well, I don't play the Game Gear anymore. You know, I just, and the Game Gear is red hot at the moment. So I, I just thought, well, there's nothing, you know, I, I've, there's nothing I'd miss on the game. There are games that I want to play in the game that I've got on compilations and other ones anyway. Um, you know, I know it's emulation, but I like emulation, I don't mind it. So I basically put them up on the Game Gear collector groups and they sold like hotcakes. I couldn't believe how well Game Gear sells. Um, if you are a member of the Facebook groups, uh, Faith has recently done a post about the £4,000 Game Gear game because it's so rare and people need it to, collect, to complete their collection. I think it was Power Drive. Yeah, £4,000 for a Game Gear game. Just the one. Um, yeah, I think it's Faith Johnson, her name. Please feel free to check. But enough about that. So I was selling my Sega Saturn stuff and I got a message from a, we'll say a musician, I'll say who it was. He was like, hey dude, that's a cool Saturn collection. Um, you know, I'm not interested in buying, oh, I'm going to be partnering with some of my collection soon and I'll get you some decent prices if you're interested. And I'm kind of like, mate, perfect timing. And um, so he says he can get his, his list together and we'll get together and he sent me his list and basically work took over and so things went quiet for about a month. And then I had some free time and I was like, oh my god, yes, I need to reply to that message and I messaged him. And then we've basically <laughs> been non-stop talking for about since then. And so um, I bought, the first lot I got was, um, yeah, let's just cut the chase. They're all Japanese Sega Saturn games. I got these for a really good, good, amazing prices. And these are all games I needed for the collection, and I'm so chuffed to get them. And 
I'm still nervous. I know a fellow YouTuber, Scott Brown's originally been picking up Japanese Sega Saturn, uh, Sega Zombie, so I'm looking forward to seeing your videos, Scott. But let's get started with mine. So, the first bundle I purchased of him, I got Layer Section, which of course came out in the UK as Galactic Attack. Uh, can you see that? Fine look, summer. That's what we did there. I then got um, Layer Section 2, which was uh, Rainstorm. Yeah, both these games are great. I definitely prefer the first one. I think the first one's absolutely amazing. The second one's not so bad, but the first one's my favourite. I then got Salamander Deluxe Fat. Uh, Salamander Life Force Salamander 2. Uh, great game. I found the first Salamander rock hard. Life Force, great, but Salamander 2 is where it's at for me. I think it's a bit purely because when you die, you don't go way back to the level, you just continue on. But yeah, really love these collections. Really love this collection. Yeah, I'm really happy to have that. And then moved on to the Strikers, 1945. Fantastic. Um, if you remember 1942, similar to that, you know, really cool beat music. And to go with that, 1940, uh, Strikers, 1945, Part 2. Which again, absolutely fantastic. I wanted to kind of like mix things up from his list. I didn't want to just buy shooters. And so I was talking to Reggie um, about two months ago and he mentioned a Japanese Sega sat and beat him up. I was kind of like, oh, I might look into that. And I looked at eBay prices and I'm like, mm, I might not look into that. But this dude had it, really great price. And I got that, and that is um, Sonic Council, uh, Soko City Okai. And uh, yeah, this is a fun little game. It's cool, it's got um, one of my favourite little arcade backgrounds. It's taking place in an arcade. Um, yeah, this is a fun one. It's crazy. I mean, what isn't crazy pricey? on Sega Saturn Japanese these days, but yeah, this is really good, really good fun. If you can pick this up for a decent price, I will say 40, 40 or below, it is 100% worth it. I would not go too high on it, because it was, it's great, it's not the best of the best. Um, ah, this game is called Boko Ipitsu Doronobu <laughs> Can Pick a Band. It's like playing a cartoon. It's got a vertical shooter, and but you're on the floor. Basically, on the floor, of course you're on the floor, you're on the ground, you start the level, you pick your ship, and they're really long ass levels as well, you know, they're about 20 minutes a level, whereas if most ships are like 8 or 9, and yeah, you're just playing a cartoon, it's absolutely fantastic, I really freaking love it, and again, this is another price, one, but I've got still a really, really good price, uh, I don't know what else to say, this is great, I mean, it's part of the, um, you know, no, it's not Gatchaman at all. I know it's not Gatchaman, but it's part of them. They were in Tatsunoko. There you go. There's your answer. I can't remember, but really highly recommended. I'd say this is this was definitely a hidden gem because I knew I wanted this, but I didn't actually know how good it was. And it's a shame there's no subtitle option for the uh, Japanese part. Absolutely fantastic. Um, oh, I've been wanting this one for so long. Do on Patchy. Now, this isn't a particularly expensively, uh, expensive game to get hold of. It's been difficult to locate one in really good condition. And I got Don Patch, because I bought Don Patch, I think it was last year, thinking, I said to Tony, oh, is this the one we played up in London? And he was like, oh, no, 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 that's do Don Patchy. And of course, Don Patch is a great game, but it does not compare to this. This is the pinnacle. This is absolutely bloody amazing. Definitely worth getting. I should say most of these vertical shooters, some are a bit weird. The next game. Now this was the highlight. I can't believe I actually own this, and I did spend the most on this, and I've ever spent on any computer game in my life, but it's still nothing compared to what it sells for normally. Absolutely nothing. And I've played this, I've seen videos of this, and people saying, wow, well, this game is crazy expensive. You must play it. It's amazing. People like Sega Lord X and um, other YouTubers. <laughs> I'm sorry, but when I, I saw this on the list and the price, I was like, oh my god, I need to get that, I need to get that, and I did, and that is Hyper Jewel. Now, I know in the past where I've had pickups, and especially if you watch my other channel, Native Crumbages games, I've said, you know, like three, about four or five years ago, I picked up Musha, and I say, whilst that was really expensive then, that was then, of course, because it's like a billion times more expensive now, it's one of the games I would say really justifies the price because it's so good. I mean, if you've got that kind of money laying around and you know you're in a well-paid job, definitely, definitely get that. And the same for this, but 
This is a different one because this is one of the most expensive Sega Saturn games. Full stop, no arguing. Um, it's up there, definitely in the top five. But my god, is it absolutely worth it? I mean, basically, you know, I know I sold my power Saturn stuff and I sold my Game Gear stuff, but I would trade it off all of that just for this one game. And lucky enough, I didn't have to. But I didn't know how good it was, and it was so, so good. Now, I can't wait for the world to get a bit more back to normal. It's never going to get back to normal, normal. So, like, my mates can come around Jason and that, and we can play some two player on this. I played some single player on this. And it was one of those bliss moments when I was playing. It's just so good. I mean, this is definitely probably my favourite import Sega Saturn game ever. And I've only played it for a few hours. I just, I'm so, oh, it's good. It's worth the money if you can afford it. Don't get yourself in debt to get it. But if you've got a way of getting hold of it by a trade or something, do, 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 do. Brilliant. 10 out of 10. 50 out of 10. And so that's the, my, that was my uh, first lot of games. And he says, all oh, right. Yeah, well, he says, well, you've enjoyed that, you've got a lot there, Cliff. This is the, obviously the bar I'm talking about. Time for some freebies. And I'm like, well, he said, well, you've bought that much, I want to give you some freebies. So I'm like, fair enough, I'm never going to turn freebies down. What's he going to offer? You know, like a Sega magazine or something like that? Oh, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. First freebie he gave me was Planet Joker. And um, this has been one that I've been wanting to get for absolutely ages. And he's kind of like, he offered me something else. And I said, oh, I'd like, I'd like that. And um, he offered me like a, a choice, and he's like, well, I wouldn't recommend that. It's not the best. But it's been one I've always wanted to play on my, um, to get on the playlist. It's like a, kind of a 3 d fight shooter vertical. And, um, yeah, pretty dull. Uh, it's not great. And I'm glad I didn't really, I'm glad this was a freebie, because if I, I think if I would have paid 20 quid for this, I would have felt ripped off, because it's not great. Um... I mean, thanks for the freebie, but I'm so glad to have it. I will play it, and I know all my friends that come around that will uh, have a bash on it and stuff, and they've got lots to play. But yeah, I can't recommend it. It's not the best. Now, this next freebie is bloody well weird. This is 2 by slot shooting. Um, it's a shooter, but it's a puzzle game. Yeah. YouTube it. Uh, I've played about 20, 25 minutes of this. And it takes a while to understand what's going on and figure out how to play it and stuff. But yeah, I really freaking enjoyed it. It's just so not what you expect. It's really good though, really, really good. I mean, it's not an expensive game as well. I looked on eBay, it's about £12. So I'll definitely recommend getting it. <sighs> okay, and so I got this really chuffed and he goes, Cliff. I want to give you more freebies because you spent quite a bit. And I'm like, freebies, of course. So the next two freebies he gave me are the Hitachi Japanese Sega Saturn Pad. That is some weird Sega music going on in the background. Do you agree? And the Victor Japanese Sega Saturn Mag, uh, Mag? Pad, which I didn't have. And I kept them both and they're all flawless and they all work absolutely fine. And so I played all that and I was like, oh my god, heaven has happened, nothing is ever going to top this. And then he sent me an updated list, list with no prices and I'm like, what are you doing? Don't do this to me! <laughs> so yes, I bought another bundle. Um, no, I didn't spend anywhere near as much as this and he actually did me two games in this bundle. So that Hyper Joy I never thought I'd own and there's a game in here I never thought I'd own. The game in here I never thought I'd own, he had a price for it and he's just like, and he says, yeah, price there, it's knock 100 quid, and that's how much you're going to pay. Are you sure? I'll knock 100 quid off of it. And he was like, yes, mate, yes, mate. And the guy was top guy. So he's moving on because he's um wants to buy certain guitars. And he was telling me about the world of collectible guitars. And I was just like, Whew. yeah. I think everything's got its niche. And yeah, I couldn't believe how intricate and how expensive some guitars can be. I mean, you're a musician, it's you know your life, it's what you do. I'm a gamer, look what I spend my money on. And um, yeah, I, mean, I hope he gets his uh, guitar, but it's one of those things where you need to find it. So it's looking for the, the Lost Ark and stuff. But yeah, so into my second package. So yeah, I bought a few more games. I got Dizimon 2. It's not great. It's uh, all right. It's it's a shooter. Um, there's not really much to talk about. If you could pick this up, I'd say it's, you'd be happy with about 
15, 10 pounds spend on that. Not brilliant, it's not a really weird satin game that's a bit thicker, a bit wider. But yeah, it's okay, it's kind of like a 5 out of 10. Um, Terra Cresta 3D, now I know a lot of people hate this game because it's a 3D sort of Galaxy Force 2 style game. It's, um, it's alright, again I don't think it's absolutely amazing, I definitely don't think it's worth what it's going for on eBay. No way is it worth lot, even half of that, I mean lucky I didn't pay half of that. Um, but it's alright, and um, I would kind of like to get all the shooters on Saturn. And believe it or not, it doesn't leave me with many to go. Um, the next one he had reserved for someone, but um, I don't know, they didn't pick it up or something like that. And so I did next Sonic Wings. Uh, I did have a PS1 version a long time ago, but I don't anymore. And this is a fun game. I find it very, um, very fun to play, but at the same time very dull if that kind of makes any sense, like you could uh, just fall asleep when you're playing it. Uh, okay, yeah, it's all complete with the CD. I mean, not, nearly all these have spine and reg, and they are in absolutely immaculate condition. And believe me, I've checked all the discs, they'll read 100%, and I've yet to ever, I've never seen a Japanese Sega Saturn game with this one. So, yeah. Now this next game is the one that he offered me a hundred pounds off. And I was like, dude, I should say games actually, that's, that's ridiculously cheap and he's like no man it's cool you love this stuff this is what you're about so I'm like yeah I love that and one of my friends um, I've known forever who's uh, Martin also known on YouTube as Vlogos Pow Pow absolutely loves this game we love one of them and so I got the uh, what's it called Image Fight Arcade Gears Collection in X Multiply and um, he always uh, goes on about how so back in the day I used to play Image Fight I used to really really like it and I thought it was uh, a top game. I'd never played X Multiplied before, and when I spoke to Martin many years back, he was like, "Image Fight, uh, sorry, X Multiplied is where it's at. X Multiplied is the game." So I sat down for the evening with my cup of tea, and like, here we go, time for me to have my go. And I spent an hour or so in Image Fight, and yeah, it's just as good as I remember. I had my fun with it, but oh my god, X Multiplied. What a game! I absolutely love the fact you get like extended armors to power you up, and you do massively overpower yourself. Um, X Multiplayer is where it's at here. I mean, this is so expensive. This game now. This is this is. I can't justify. I mean, please find it. Play the games if if you want to get them. You know, play the games on main. Give them a try. Be sure you want to get them first. X, uh, I totally agree with Blogos Power. X Multiplier is where it's at. But this is one of the games that it's just... That's a lot. That's a lot of money. Do I really want to play that to get this game? And, you know, was I got luck, I got lucky with all of this. I didn't know. I paid nowhere near what they're worth, half they're worth. Or not. I'm so happy. I mean, the dude is the best for doing the deals for me. But X Multiplier is an absolutely fantastic game. I should say as well, that the, obviously my game of the month, even the one you haven't seen, one of the two you haven't seen yet, is Hyperjewel. And um, Hyperjewel is brilliant, but the Saturn mode is better. It is really, really cool. And so, yeah, so I bought those next few games for him, and he was like, Cliff, time for another load of freebies. And I'm like, are you kidding? He's like, no, you buy from me, you get freebies. Comment below if you know who the seller is, because he tend, apparently he does this a lot when he does sell, which is very often. So, I got two freebies. And I have not managed to um, get uh, do the what is it? Okay, so this one is Toku Menki Memorial Forever with You. Basically, it's your bog standard Japanese Sega Saturn dating game. Blah 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 blah. <sighs> but it has two hidden shoot 'em ups on it. It's a long ass way to get to the shoot 'em ups. Um, I tried for. Grand ages. Now this is the one I was, yeah, this is the one I was trying. Basically you try and chat girls up and all that and you need to get your stats up in science and stuff to certain stats. And when you get the certain stats certain high, you can unlock um, the two shooters. And now it takes ages and it's cool that they're on there, but I just YouTubed it and I thought, my god, that's gonna take me a while, but if I ever want to do it, play them, I will. And like I said I played the game but I didn't play it long enough to unlock the shooters. So um yeah, but I got it, and it's there off the shoe box. I didn't even know this existed. I didn't know Saturn Games had hidden shooters, but I do now. And the other game I got, this was um, basically Mark. If anyone used to watch Mark from Classic Game Room, Dixard. Um, 
yeah, you can kind of imagine it's a Tshinden style beat em up. He's not great. It's, um, I'd say it's a solid game. Pick it up for like 10 15 pounds. It's worth it. I'd say it's worth it. It's not a brilliant game. Uh, but yeah, 3D style arena beat em up. And it's pretty cool. I mean, I enjoyed the uh, hour or so I've had in it, and I'm sure when the lads come back, right, as I've said about 300 times, we'll get a lot, lot of multiplayer fun on this. And then, the last pile. Pile number, well, it's not pile. Yeah, one more game I wanted, and I had just enough to be able to get it. And so, I was kind of like, yeah, this is, the, I mean, the list still goes on, there's still more to get if I want, but I'm, funds, uh, low Christmas coming up and you know birthdays and so forth um, but I was like yes I, I wanted to get this I definitely wanted to get this one because this is one I've wanted to play for a long time and I'd say this is my third favourite game of the month from the Saturn Hyper Jewel first, Doodon Patchy second and third is Wolfang um, when I actually picked this one, when it actually turned up I was Skyping Reggie and he was like man that game's great I've got the Playstation version you should play it for ages and I did and what I love about it is it's a side, side shooter, you're in a mech and you go along and you, you know, you, you're on a flat plane, you get like an angle bit which you can go up and down on, you shoot back, uh, backwards and forwards and you can jump over the bad guys, you can hover and when you get damaged so much you, you basically explode and you're just a little guy in the air and if you collect enough bits, which I'm pretty sure is impossible, you can rebuild your mech, but what I like is the mechs you shoot and the bits you get during the game when you die, when you continue, you can build a, you can either continue as the mech you had, or you can build a brand new mech out of the bit, bets you've got to continue playing the game. And that was brilliant. I was like, my God, man, that game's, that's awesome. And so, yeah, I spent a few hours playing this and looking forward to playing it a lot more. Yeah, really cool game, really highly recommended. And this one is over the £100, $100 mark. I would say it's worth it. I mean, the PlayStation version, I don't know how much that goes for. I released in Japan, of course. But yeah, it's one of the games that, whereas it's high, I'd say it's worth it. But of course, as I said, don't, get, don't put yourself in debt or anything like that. If you can afford it, go for it. And with that, he said, Cliff, I've got another freebie, which is the final freebie, because this is my final pickup of the month, and it's been a long, long month so far. And that is... Will you Sama... Express. Yeah, I meant to say, like basically, one of the three B, one of the uh, unlockable games, like, it's a twin B game, and there are actually two games. One's a twin B, and it's really, really cool. Which of course goes into this. Now, basically, this has a menu system. It again is the bog standard Japanese dating system. Uh, not interested whatsoever in it, but it has an option to go to the arcade. And you go to the arcade, and there's an option for like different games. One's a shooter, and the shooter is freaking brilliant. Absolutely fucking excellent, you know, and I was just like, wow, this was awesome. And it's a, you know, after finally figuring out how to unlock it, I played it for about 40 minutes. And as an unlockable, I'd, like, I'd buy this if it was on its own, it didn't need to be an unlockable, they just released that in itself, it's really cool. Yeah, Ojo, Ojo Yo Sama Express, I'm sorry if I'm butchering the names or anything, guys, but feel free to YouTube the look. There are a few videos on some of these, this one, the two where they have unlockable shoots. There's not many videos on YouTube, but there's basically people talking about it. And what I did find funny is some of the guides on YouTube, and that one's the symbol, but some of the guides on YouTube are how to unlock stuff. Because there's not many people talking about these games, they're confusing as fuck. <laughs> and yeah, even Wikipedia and stuff like that. But yeah. But anyway, this has been my pickups for August, and oh my god, the guy that sold everyone, I mean, big, big thank you to Reggie for my bundle there, uh, Mark Jowett for my Sega Saturn mags, um, dude for Jabba the Hutt, <laughs> whoever he is. But the main star of the show this month is Sega, the Sega Saturn bundle. I mean, I'm, I kind of always hope to knock off one a year or two a year. But anyway, guys, um, Thanks for watching, um, take care of yourself and I'll catch you all later.